Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can enumerate your epochs and batches for training a model in Keras. What do I mean by that? Well, if you are used to doing model.fit and then providing your XY values and the number of epochs and batch size and validation data, great, nothing wrong with that. But if you want a bit more flexibility, then eventually you may want to enumerate these epochs yourself, meaning for each epoch in number of epochs, for batch in your number of batches, go ahead and do this. Go ahead and do the training part, right? So in fact, you can uh, define a lot of things like you can define your gradient descent, uh, your uh, loss and a whole bunch of things as part of it. So in this video, I'm just going to show you a uh, at a high level how you can actually enumerate this. And if you already know this, great. This can be a reinforcing message to already uh, the information that you already know. But anyway, let's jump in. I'm not gonna make this a very long video. Uh, uh, hopefully it should be quickly watchable by you guys. So let's jump into the code and get started. So for today's exercise, I'm going to use our CIFAR dataset. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just going to use CIFAR because it's easily accessible just by writing, uh, writing a line of code and uh, not much of a preparation that you need to do. So we can directly focus on what we are trying to uh, achieve in this video, which is understanding how you can put together this uh, this for loops. Okay, first of all, let's go ahead and import the required libraries like for plotting and sequential method. I'm going to use that to put together our uh, a simple model for uh, a multi-class classification. So batch normalization, convolution, max pooling, and from the keras.datasets, let's go ahead and import our CIFAR10 data data set. And then we are going to normalize this data set and convert our Y values to categorical because this is multi-class classification. And I'm importing a couple of random. In fact, uh, this I'm not even using. I'm just uh, importing randint. Uh, so I can sample, subsample some, uh, some images from the entire set of images. So these are that's a quick, fast explanation of the libraries that I'm using. So let's go ahead and run those. And now let's uh, assign or load our CIFAR10 data. And you probably know how to do that, CIFAR10.load data. And then when you do that, it gives you four uh, uh, outputs, which is your X train, Y train, X test, and Y test. Okay, so let's go ahead and run these. And as you will see in a second, these images are all 32 by 32 by three size and they're all unsigned integer eight, which means the values go from zero to 255. So we have to normalize them or scale them. So that's what we are going to do. But first thing is uh, our training data set has 50,000 images and our testing has 10,000 images. I'm just going to take only 5,000 images for tra training of those uh, 50,000 and only 1,000 images of the 10,000. And I'm going to subsample like uh, randomly hoping that we'd get enough sample for each class. Why am I doing this? So you don't stare at the screen while our model is training. I just wanna make sure that this video finishes in a good, uh, decent amount of time. So uh, that's the reason. Otherwise, there is no other reason why you should be doing this, right? So let's go ahead and run these two lines. Uh, immediately, you should see that my training images random training images are 5,000, and I have random testing images of 1,000. So this is basically a list of all the images, image numbers, let's say. So now let's uh, reassign our X train and Y train, X test and Y test to only get these 5,000 and 1,000 images. So that's exactly what I have. So by now, I only, I mean, all of these are optional steps only to speed up this video, that's it. Okay, now that I have my X train and Y train, I need to normalize our X values. I actually like, instead of normalize, I should have changed it. Instead of normalize from keras.utilities, uh, I like uh, minmax scalar. Yeah, I like minmax scalar. Look up minmax scalar from scikit-learn. I like that much better. But anyway, it doesn't matter for this purpose. They should, they should uh, for this video, this should serve the purpose. Okay, so we have normalized it. That means our values for X are floating point values that go between, I, I'm not even sure if it goes between zero to one, but they're definitely normalized, meaning they have, uh, they're scaled, but also have some sort of a normal distribution. Okay, now let's convert our Y values to categorical because this is a multi-class classification where we use categorical cross entropy. 
yeah so that's why we need our values to be converted to categorical again if you don't know what i'm talking about then you should go back watch my videos on multi-class classification using c4 data sets and others okay but i assume by now you know exactly what these are so let's go ahead and put together our model using sequential method and i'm going to use convolution convolution max pooling con con max pooling and then flatten and then one hidden dense layer of 128 and then my final dense layer of course has an output of 10 because we have 10 classes here and softmax and i'm going to compile so this part again nothing new here this is something we always do okay and uh, finally uh, i'm going to uh, copy my model into another model called model one why because i would like to uh, I would like to test the training both ways using uh, using our regular way and also using our epochs. I am sharing this code with you so you can do the testing uh, by yourself. That's why I'm leaving all of these as is. Now, you probably know this part, right? I mean, this is what we always did when it comes to these type of simple model training, which is model.fit. Fit on what? Fit on my X train and Y train number of epochs 100 or something for now let's leave it to 10 and a batch size of 16 or 32 whatever you think is necessary and validation data is x test and y test when you provide this after each epoch let's go ahead and run these lines while it's running i can explain exactly uh, so after each epoch you can see that it's uh, it's actually reporting you the parameters that we selected here. So our metrics that we selected are accuracy. So it's going to report both the loss and accuracy. Yeah, after each epoch on what? On training data and also on testing data. So if you look down here, this is stuff that you probably know, but it's worth explaining. Yeah. So if you look here, you have a loss, you have accuracy, you have validation loss and validation accuracy. Okay, so far so good. And this part again, like I said, you probably know already. Let's go down and look at how you can define exactly the same by enumerating, by writing for loops. Okay, first of all, when you define your training data and you define your batch size, this model.fit takes care of supplying 16 images to the model at a time for training. That means 16 times uh, or 313 is apparently somewhere near 5,000. In order for the model to see all 5,000 images, in batches of 16, it takes 313 iterations. That's what that means, yeah? Model.fit is providing these images as batches. But if we write our own for a loop, we need to supply these images in batches. So first, we need to define a function that, that gives us uh, images in batches and then we can uh, uh, run these for loops, okay? So this training is done and the final validation accuracy is 53.6% and our uh, uh, training accuracy is 96.6%. I'm not surprised here because uh, this is uh, a bit uh, overfitting on your, uh, obviously a lot overfitting on your training data. We don't have enough validation data and uh, this is why working on the entire data set uh, will definitely give you a bit more uh, insights that are not biased one way or the other, okay? Or heavily biased, I should say. Okay, so until this point, you know exactly what to do. Now we establish the fact that we need a function that supplies images in batches. Uh, you can you can try uh, this method, which is just fetching a batch. If you provide X and Y values and the batch size, uh, it is going to provide, uh, uh, you know, you with uh, a set of images right there. Or you can actually try fetching you, uh, images using random batch of images. So I, I commented this out, but if you want, you can go ahead and use this also. Here, it's fetching random random batch of images at a time, and it's just supplying those random batch, that's it. I am going to use the first one for now, so let's go ahead and run this, run this, uh, these lines. So it's going to just fetch a batch of images and provide it during our training process okay remember that now let's uh, provide pretty much uh, a couple of uh, 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 values first of all our batch size is 16 right this is we want to keep it the same as uh, before just so we can compare so our batch size is 16 and our number of epochs equals to 10. let's run this for 10 epochs now here if you remember it's giving us our loss 
accuracy. This is basically training loss and training accuracy, right? On training data. And then it gives us validation loss and validation accuracy because this is the loss and accuracy on the validation data or testing data, if you want to call it. So here we need to capture that information during the training process. Okay. So for that, I defined these four empty lists, one for uh, training loss, one for validation loss, one for training accuracy, and the other for validation accuracy. Okay, so this is what we are defining. So let's go ahead and run these lines. So this is basically empty. And as we go through the for loops, we are going to populate it, that's it. Okay, a couple more libraries here. One is uh, TQDM. I'm pretty sure most of you know what this is. This just shows us the progress bar. So when it is training, uh, I don't want to print after every batch. I would like to print after every epoch. So, but during the uh, batch training, I just want to see the progress. That's exactly why I'm using that. And here I'm using uh, shuffle, uh, probably because I am shuffling. Sorry about this. I should have been a bit more prepared. Yeah, right there. I'm trying to find where it is. Uh, here I'm uh, assigning my X and Y by shuffling or X train and Y train. That's it. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll uh, have a quick look at this again uh, as we are going down, which is right now. So for each epoch in 10 epochs, so it goes through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? For each of these, go ahead and shuffle my training, X train and Y train, and give me the values for X and Y. All it's doing is just shuffling, okay? Instead of keep keeping it constant. And then for each batch in, what is the length of my X train, right? 5,000 images. 5,000 divided by 16, which should be 313 or 312, right? I mean, it depends on where uh, we can do that. We can do the math here. 513, two slashes gives you an integer value divided by 16 is 312. Apparently, when you do model.fit, it actually, after 312, there are certain images remaining, and those images, it's actually assigning as the th uh, last iteration. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We have 312. So all this is basically for batch in 312, 0 to 311, go ahead and do this part. Do what? Well, first of all, we need to get a batch of images. What is that batch of images? We have our X and Y, right? From these X and Y, fetch a batch. What does that mean? Looking at this function, Go ahead and fetch a batch. Uh, yeah, so it's giving us 16 images right here. So my X batch should have 16 images. Y batch is basically 16 labels. Okay, so now we have our images. It's pretty uh, straightforward now. Instead of model.fit, there is a function called train on batch. Model one dot train dot. Why did I call model one? Oh yeah, uh, we call this model one because we defined it as model one. Never mind. Anyway, model dot train on batch, and our x is x batch and y is y batch. So train on batch is basically it's like model dot fit except it actually is working on a single batch. That's it. So the output of model dot train on batch is basically whatever the output of our model dot fit would be, right? It's a history. And what is the output of model dot fit? It's loss and accuracy, or whatever the metrics that you're tracking. That's exactly what we get here, loss and accuracy. After the single batch, if you want, you can capture this information. But I don't want to capture this information after every batch, but I would like to capture that information after every epoch. That's why I have loss.myhistory right here, and I'm capturing uh, the loss right there. Same with my accuracy. I hope that makes sense. So if I create some space there, for each batch, it's fetching these images and corresponding labels, and we are training it on the batch, model.trained on batch. That's it. When you do that, you get loss and accuracy, and I am uh, that happens for this entire batch. And once all the batches are done, I'm capturing the last loss, the final loss value of the last uh, after the last batch training, and then the accuracy of the last one, and I'm appending to the list. So far, so good. Now, how do we get the validation data? 
exactly pretty much the same way that you normally get when you train a model. What do you do? You do model.predict on your test data, right? That's exactly what we are doing. My YPRID is model.predict on my X test data set or X validation, if you want to call it, and you get your Y predict. When you get Y predict, go ahead and evaluate your model. And when you evaluate the model, what do you get? You get loss and accuracy, right? So this is my validation loss. This is my accuracy loss. Remember, these things happen after every epoch. I'm going to capture this after every epoch. Even when you do regular training, loss and accuracy are reported for every batch, but your validation loss and validation accuracy are reported at the end of each epoch. That's exactly what we're doing at the end of each epoch. We're calculating validation loss, validation accuracy, and the rest of this is appending it to the empty list that we created up here. So we capture these after every epoch. That's it. And now we are going to print our epoch number, loss, accuracy, validation loss, validation accuracy, just like we did, uh, just like the model.fit uh, does. Okay, so let us run these lines. Uh, we did the fetch, so let's go ahead and run all of these. And uh, yeah, up to that point. So there you go, that's the TQ TQDM showing me for each batch. Again, we know that it's going to be 312 batches. And after the first epoch, you see, it did the, the uh, validation right there, and then now it's continuing with the second one. Okay, so we are printing out our loss, accuracy, training loss, training accuracy, validation loss, and validation accuracy. It looks like we are getting much uh, very good uh, training accuracy like of one uh, and validation. So this is overfitting as we know, All right? This is overfitting right there. And uh, our validation accuracy is slightly improving, but again, it looks like it is going to be very, it, there's no reason why it should be much, any much different than what we got here, right? Our validation accuracy was 53.6%. That is probably what it is looking like here. It's going to be. Okay, so I think this uh, we should end right here. Basically, the point here is, uh, yes, you can use model.fit, but if you would really like to add any other stuff in between, this approach may give you a bit more flexibility. And this is exactly what I am planning on using when I come to uh, our generative adversarial neural networks, or GANs. I would like to define my training for discriminator on real data. What is a GAN? It uh, it, it's uh, the discriminator is uh, supposed to be trained to discriminate between real and fake data. So I need two losses, one on the real data, one on the fake data. And also I need to train the, gener uh, uh, the generator part of it. So all of that, you can kind of put uh, everything into uh, you know, a couple of for loops. That's exactly why I'm covering this uh, topic right before getting on to our GAN tutorial. Okay, I hope you guys found this video to be useful. And again, as usual, if you like it, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Let's meet again in the next video. Thank you guys.